Right, let's come on in tonight. I'm glad to see everybody visiting and having a good time, but it's time for church to start. And Brother Glidden's going to lead us in song tonight. Brother Glidden, what page are we singing? 157. 157 in your hymn book. Let's all gather in and let's sing and worship the Lord tonight. 157. Here we go. Fifty-seven. Let's sing about God's grace tonight. God's grace, marvelous, infinite grace. Number one fifty-seven. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord. Grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. God of Calvary's mouth outpoured. There with the blood. that grace that's greater than all our sin. Praise the Lord for that tonight. All right, let's open with a word of prayer tonight. I <clears throat> see I'm trying to I feel like sometimes I pick on the same people all the time, so I'm going to look around. Brother Tommy back there, would you open us up in a word of prayer tonight? Father in heaven, thank you again for the opportunity to come together with like minded believers. Amen. Lord, Amen. Word, the Spirit, Lord, let the truth be spoken. I ask the Holy Spirit work in us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Number 575. we got to stand for this one, all four stanzas tonight. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Number 575. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Stand up, stand up. 
another notch tonight. I know it's been uh, kind of a long week, especially for those of us that have been singing all weekend, but let's sing unto the Lord tonight, and let's just lift it up. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. Let's sing it with enthusiasm tonight, all right? Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the strength will not be long. His faith and of battle, the next of victory song. Looking forward to that day when he is reigning eternally. It's coming soon, I think. All right, have a shake hands with everybody tonight, and then we'll come back and sing. Ridge. 
Number 564 tonight. Number 564 in the sweet by and by. I don't know about you, but these just these times together on Sunday are such a refreshment. Just to have a fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ and then just to praise the Lord together in song and get into the Word. It's so much needed. I don't know how these churches shut down services. I just don't know because we need more. <laughs> and so this is such a blessing. Let's sing this song together tonight in the suite. Bye bye. Number 564. There's a land that is fairer than day. Good singing tonight. I think I have to What the world's wrong with you? I'll just preach that happiness out of you. Okay. I'll ruin your day. I'm good at it. Turn on the microphone. Okay. Uh, that, y'all from Mississippi over Raise your hand if you're from Mississippi. Look at that. And uh, and, and do y'all sing? Sometimes. Do y'all sing up here? Sometimes, well, you get you a song ready after I'm done preaching, you all going to sing tonight, whether you want to or not, all right? Yeah. All right, you get a song ready, you're going to sing. What, there at Sister um, Patterson's, Carpenter, man, where'd I get Patterson? Yeah. Sister Sister Carpenter, where are you at? He didn't count <laughs> And sent you? <laughs> oh, okay, she's with them. I'll just aggravate you. But anyway, and Sam, you got to sing with them. And you guys are all you relatives over there. But anyway, we've been invaded by Mississippi. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Uh, Amen. Amen. I know what Dean wants me to say so he can teach you Yankees how to sing. No. Hey, you know what's good? A, little, a lot of both of it. Amen. We need them hymns and we need them spiritual songs. Uh, we have a couple of photos that we need to show uh, it, here pretty soon. <sighs> well, I just have some business that has to be taken care of. On you, I ain't nothing I can do about it. But anyway, why? Uh, I tell you what, let's do. Take your Bibles uh, tonight to Acts chapter 21, and uh, we'll hang on there just a little bit. And Joel, he'll give me the oh, turn on. Sorry, guys. I thought you wanted me to take my gun off. I thought the sign said take gun off. <laughs> I'm lying. I'm lying. Getting anywhere close there, Brett? Alrighty. But, um, boy, I tell you what, appreciate you being out tonight. Appreciate your love one for another and just the joy of the Lord. Isn't the joy of the Lord wonderful? And I'll tell you, all right, you got them? All right, let's, we're going to have... Uh, I'll tell you why I'm doing this. This is getting pathetic. The girls are out hunting the guys bad. 
And guys, these little spikes you're doing and dozing, and look at this. And so I don't know what to do other than tell you that the daddies are telling me that if you can't kill a bigger buck than their daughter, don't even look at her. You are not a candidate. <laughs> I'll leave you alone now. Forget it. I thought those were so good. Hey, man, that's a blessing. And, uh, you know, somebody said, what do you do that in church for? This is church. This ain't. Well, you know, we're not very spiritual here down the Ozarks. We, we just have to be a little bit there. All righty. Let's get right into the Bible tonight because we're going to have these folks in Mississippi sing when they're done. And I'm looking forward to that already. Uh, Acts chapter 21 tonight, if you have your Bibles there. Now, uh, let me guess. This is going to be a continuation, and it kind of happened odd, of this morning's message a little bit. Uh, hopefully it won't be as heavy as this morning. Now, that was a pretty heavy preaching this morning, and tonight I think it will be helpful to us. Uh, I want to preach a message tonight entitled, Informed to Your Deformed. Informed to Your Deformed. And I want to give some credit tonight to Cody Zorn. You've heard me speak about him. Now, again, I haven't listened to over four or five of his messages, but boy, I tell you what, the old boy's a preacher. And uh, he preached a message on the, uh, some, something about, uh, anyway, and I stole some of his points. So I'm going to admit that tonight, that I stole some of his points. Or so, well, everything, so if you don't like the message, send him your grievances. Amen. No, I've just preached it. I wouldn't preach it unless I felt God wanted me to preach it. Now, I've made my own butter. I'll milk two or three cows, and I'll churn my own butter. All right? So I'm going to preach. Some of you trying to figure that one out. What's that mean? What's that got to do with preaching? But anyway, you'll get it. So, so here we go. In the book of Acts, now, when you get to chapter 21, remember that Paul had been struck down on the road to Damascus, right? He's, up, he's going after to kill Christians and hail them and put them in prison, and he was the worst enemy the Christians had. God struck him down. God saved him, turned him around. He became a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and God called him to preach, an apostle to the Gentiles, and Paul took off a of preaching. Now, he did go 14 years back in Arabia, and God had to get his mind renewed and get him straightened out with a lot of things, and God revealed some things to Paul that he had not revealed uh, to anybody else in the, in the church. Now, a lot of it was revelate what was to do was showing that out of the Old Testament a lot of things going to but When you get into chapter 21, Paul has been down the road in ministry. And I want to show you something tonight that I saw that Brother Cody preached that I never saw in the book Acts for in my life. And I thought, man, how this goes with this morning. So anyway, here we go. Let's pick it up at uh, verse number, uh, well, in, in chapter 21, uh, look at verse number 4. And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days, who said to Paul, through the Spirit, capital S. These guys weren't just talking off the side of their head. The Holy Ghost had dealt with him to tell Paul something. He said that he should not go up to Jerusalem. Well, Paul said, I'm going anyway. I don't care what God's told you. <laughs> that gets dicey, don't it? Now, here's the Apostle Paul. And these people loved him and said, Paul, in fact, you're going up there. Uh, uh, let's go up to verse number 10. As we tarried there many days, they came down from Judea, a certain prophet named Abag Agabus. And when Paul's come unto him, he took Paul's girdle, his belt. And bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost. So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him in the hands of Gentiles. <clears throat> and when he heard these things, both we and they of the place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Paul, don't go. You're fixing to get into a hornet's nest. Paul said he's determined to go. I'm going. And verse number 14 says, Uh... When he would not be persuaded, we ceased and quit, saying, The will of the Lord be done. You know, Paul could have had a fit, and they could have had a fit and said, We're not speaking to each other ever again. You're telling us that we, God ain't told us what, you know, that we're, you know, could have got into a whole deal like that. They just did. They said, All right, uh, we've told you what, we've given you what God's gave us. Uh, you don't want to do it. That's up to you, between you and the Lord, and let's have church. Amen. So, <clears throat> they come down and. After those days, we took up our carriages, went up to Jerusalem, verse number 15. And there went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea and brought with them one uh, Mason of Cyprus, an old disciple that w with whom we should lodge. And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. I believe that's the way you ought to receive people. Amen. Gladly. You ought to be glad to see people. Boy, glad to see you. And mean it. Amen. I'll tell you what, I come to church, I'm just a tickle to see people. I'm honest with you, just tickle me to death. I don't know, the older I get, the happier I get. That I have brothers and sisters in Christ. 
Well, the day following, verse number 18, Paul went in with us unto James and all the elders were present. Now, that's a dangerous situation. <laughs> and when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe. Thousands of Jews here had been converted to Jesus Christ. All right? And it said something else. And they are all zealous of the law. Hmm. Well, can you be a Christian and be zealous of the law? Why, sure, you ought to be. Ain't nothing wrong with the law. God says holy, just, good. Schoolmaster bring us to Christ. Amen. <clears throat> These people got saved and they were zealous of the law. I wish more Christians would get zealous of the law. And believe what God says ought to do and ought not do. It's just the commandments. A lot of Christians got the idea, I just got a ticket to heaven. I got my ticket out of hell going to heaven. I don't care about law. And then I'll go back and start using the stuff about being legalistic if you preach it. Well, verse 21, look at verse 21. This is really interesting. And they are, and here's part of my message, informed. Somebody had informed them about Paul. And here's what they had informed. Have you ever been informed by somebody? I don't need to inform you about him, about her. And look at what he had been. They are informed of me, number one, that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses. Number two, saying they ought not circumcise their children. Number three, neither do they walk after the customs. How many knows that's all a lie? Every bit of that that they had been informed about was a stinking, low-down, out-of-hell, satanic lie. Paul never told anybody to forsake Moses. Paul never told anybody that they ought not, circ don't you circumcise your children? Never told nobody. You can't find your Bible nowhere in the world said that. Neither to walk after the customs. He never said, you know, those Jewish customs you have. He said, no, you, don't, you just quit doing that. They listed three things here Paul never did at, at all. And I can show you in the book of Galatians how they twisted everything he said. They took things that he said and twisted them to their very absolute worst meaning. How many's ever had that done, what you said? You, you didn't say that. You didn't mean that. I'm going to inform you what he said. Well, let's continue. Verse 22, now these elders are talking to him. What is it therefore? What's the truth about it, Paul? Is this true? Do you say those things? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Do this, that, do therefore this that we can say, that we say to thee, we have four men which have a vow on them. Take them and purify thyself with them, be in charge with them, that they may shave their heads and watch this, that, that, and all may know that those things whereof they were what? Informed, Informed concerning thee are what? Nothing. Nothing. Hmm. But that thou thyself walkest orderly and keepest the law. Hmm. we got to straighten this mess out. The folks at church had been told this wild story about the Apostle Paul that he never said. Did you know what Reggie preached last Sunday? Did you know what Brother so-and-so said last Sunday? I'm going to inform you. You better be careful about what you're getting informed because a lot will get deformed. Your thinking will get deformed. Your spiritual vibrancy will get deformed because of what you've been informed. Well, let's go down now to, uh, that was just a big lie. Uh, in Galatians chapter 1, you know what the people, you know what some of the problem was? In Galatians chapter 1, it tells you something about the Apostle Paul, that he did not confer with them. And that was his problem. He didn't go to the big wigs and say, now boys, this is what I'm t telling people. Is that okay? Does that suit you? And they ain't going to get me knocked out of the group, is it? 
He didn't confer with them. That ticked them off. So they started informing people against him. In Galatians chapter 2, uh, he, he talks about Titus. He said, who, who was not compelled to be circumcised. He literally said the opposite thing. He said, no, we didn't compel Titus to be circumcised. We didn't try to put a yoke on him. But, uh, he got up there in chapter 2 and verse number 4. He talks about false brethren. There got to be such a pattern to this line on Paul that he finally decided these guys are fakos. They're trying to tear things up, not, not put things together. Uh, chapter, chapter 2 and verse 16, you know what Paul told him? Law can't save you. He never said that. He never saved any. He, he, he said he's not going to say. What they do when they, he said that? Took it. He don't keep the law. He's, he, he's against the law of God. He's against Moses. Just because he said the law don't save you. Old Testament tell you that. They had twisted the Old Testament until they were telling people keeping the law saves them. God never said the law saves you in the Old Testament. Never one time did he even try it was the slightest infer to that. Paul talked about in chapter 3 the curse of the law. The fact of it was Paul loved the law. And he's the one who wrote that the law was a schoolmaster that brought him to Christ. Read your Bible in Romans chapter 7 to verse number 12. You're going to find out. That the, Paul's the one who said the law is holy, the law is just, and the law is good. And they went and said that he's against the law. Twisted what he said just because he said the law won't save you. They twisted what he said. He said this, how valuable the law was to Paul. He said, I had not known sin, but by the law. He basically said, Lord, I thank you for the law because when I read the law, I found out I was a sinner. And that law led me to Christ because I realized I couldn't save myself. But they made Paul out to be that he was against the commandments and he was against the Old Testament. He was against the law of God. And he's a, he's a, a heretic. And stay away from Paul. You know what Paul knew? The letter kills, but the Spirit giveth life. So when you're in chapter, 20, in chapter 21 of Acts there in verses number 20 and 22, he got slandered on. He got lied on. We'll go down to verse 27. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were in Asia, which saw him in the temple, underline your Bible, stirred up all the people. First of all, he got slandered. And then second of all, he got, uh, he, uh, the, that little slander stirred up all the people against him. Don't you like people that just stir up trouble? Oh, Jezebel, the Bible said that none like her that stirred her husband up to do evil. She just stirred her husband up, stirred her husband up. I'm going to tell you, watch out for people who stir and stuff up. Amen. Amen. Don't hang around them. Amen. They're probably to lying on somebody. That's what they're stirring up. They don't like somebody. They're mad at somebody, jealous of somebody, envious of somebody. Something about, and they'll lie on them, and they'll stir other people up against them. Amen. I said this is a continuation. Now everybody smile. We're having a good time in the house of God. All right, we're going to learn tonight. I'm glad God put this in there. I've never seen this in the Bible before. Never picked up on the fact they were lying like dogs about him. And he stirred up all the people and laid hands on him. They got some mad. <laughs> put him in jail. Now look at what, look, look what. Verse number 28, crying out. Men of Israel, help. <laughs> help him. Help us be. Help us lie on him. <laughs> help us stir up things against him. Look what it says. Men of Israel. This is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law. He said he's against you and he's against the law. Yeah. Can you believe this? Yeah. They stirred people up, lied on him, said this guy is against the law. He's against you people. Look at this. And this place. He said he's against the temple. Paul never said that. He never did anything to show he was against that. <clears throat> and further, watch this and this is big. Brought Greeks also into the temple and hath polluted this holy place. Look at verse 29. I'm going to tell you this. For they had seen before with him where? In the city, city Trophimus and Ephesian. Whom they what? Supposed. Supposed. <laughs> That God, that Paul had brought into the temple. And Paul never did no such thing. They just saw him with a, with a Gentile. And they didn't like him. So they just kind of took this thing and beyond the truth. And said, Paul brought a Gentile in the temple area. 
He hates this place. He's against this place. He's against our people. He's against the law. I mean, they made him out to be a devil. And absolutely, Brother Jerry, none of it was truth. You ever had that done to you? Took what you said and just absolutely twisted it to the worst possible thing you can imagine. It doesn't make for good fellowship, does it? Now, in verse, go up to verse 37 and 38. And what happened was they bound him with chains. I mean, these people have train wrecked this man. He's now arrested. And verse number 37 says, boy, in verse 36, the multitude of the people followed after crying away with him. Verse 37, as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto, now watch this guy's name, the chief captain. You're going to find out a lot about this man, his chief captain. And as he, he said, may I speak unto thee? Who said? The chief captain. Paul says, hey, can I talk to you a minute? You're the officer in charge. I want to talk to you. Would, would you listen to what I got to say? And the chief officer, look what he says. Who said, can thou speak Greek? And listen to this chief captain, what he says to Paul. Art not thou that Egyptian which before these days madest an uproar? <laughs> And led us out into the wilderness, 4,000 men that were murderers? Woo! He said, you're Paul, right? Yeah. Aren't, aren't you the... Can you believe what you're hearing? An Egyptian? <laughs> That's the last thing on earth Paul was. He was not an Egyptian. He was an Israelite and a Jew. And uh, aren't you that Egyptian uh, back here a while back made a big uproar? And uh, and, and you let uh, 4,000 men out in the wilderness and they were all a bunch of murderers and you was leading the pack. I bet you ain't nobody in this building been lied on like that. Now, where did that guy hear that story from? Brother Ashton, where in the world do you reckon told that chief captain, this guy here, he's an Egyptian? That wasn't, that wasn't something you, that, that Israelite people wanted to hear at all. No, no. They are making him out to be the devil. They made him out to be an Egyptian. He was no more an Egyptian than you, a man in the moon. They said he caused an uproar. He hadn't done it. They said, you went out, took 4,000 men out in the wilderness, and you were all murderers. How many would say that's a big fat one? Now, I'm telling you, there's a ripping and a snorting of lies out, wasn't he? <clears throat> Has anybody besides me never picked all this up before? I had never picked this up to Brother Cody's preaching this. I said, how come I read a book I actually didn't pick up how much, how much there's a line on the Apostle Paul? So now we're going to look at this. So how many here has ever had a little bitty story told on you? Or something happened to you? Somebody said something about you. Twisted what you said. Blah, 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 blah. So now tonight we're going to learn from Paul how do you handle that kind of junk. All right? Uh, you're going to have it happen to you. All right, are you ready? Here's Cody Zorn's outline. Number one. How do I respond to a bunch of liars that are slandering me and, and making me out to be a, anything and everything? I mean, they told the biggest lies in the world. You couldn't even imagine such stuff. He was lied, lied on, lied on, lied on, lied on the whole chapter. Lied on by everybody and his brother. And all he is, a saved man being called a priest, just trying to preach the gospel, reach people to Jesus Christ, preaching the grace of God. And they have absolutely caught, took everything he was saying and doing and twisted it opposite. Till finally he was murdered out to be an Egyptian, leading 4,000 men, they were all murderers. <laughs> How many ever heard a story on yourself and you're like, where in the world did that one come from? <laughs> Who started that? I mean, whose mind's working like that? Are you ready? As Cody Zorn says, three things and we're out of here. Number one, how you want to respond to this kind of junk? Number one, get used to it. <laughs> That's theologically profound. 
You're going to serve God. You're going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to go to church. You're going to sing. You're going to serve. You're going to pray. You're going to get in gear for God. Try to do something for God. Get used to it. From the time Paul started, all they did was doubt that he was really even saved and doubted that he'd been called of God and he was just used to it. You know what? Paul didn't go, oh, they're lying on me. God, they're lying on me. You don't read nowhere in there. <laughs> Paul never said, you're about your lying on me. I ain't putting up with this. What Paul did, he just went on. He didn't, he didn't blow out. He didn't bow out. He didn't freak out. Because a lot of lies have been told on him to the stretch of nobody's imagination. And these are not little things that's sold about that man. That's terrible stuff to tell on a man. But what did Paul do? He did what you and I, just get used to it. You're going to serve God? All you preachers, you're going to get out there, you pastor a church, you pull into some town, start pastoring a church. If can I tell you, the devil's going to, he's going to make sure there are plenty of people in that town going to tell everything in the world on you. Now, the second thing is, be glad they don't know the worst. B.R. Lake said a young preacher came up to him and said, Brother B.R., they're talking about me. They're just running me down and telling all kinds of stories on me. He said, Sonny, just be glad they don't know everything about you. Amen. Amen. C.H. Spurgeon also said something the same thing. He said, it, it, it talked about, if, if you've been talked about, he said, just be glad they don't know everything about you. Can I tell you that Jesus Christ was accused of not paying taxes? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, was. Wasn't true. Jesus Christ was accused of being a wine bibber. Probably off of making all that water into wine. I don't know. But they called him wine bibber. And I'll tell you something. He wasn't no wine bibber. That's a lie on Jesus. Did you know they said he cast out devils by Beelzebub? That's a lie. Amen. Jesus Christ was lied on all the way to the cross. Yes, and if you're going to live a Christian life and you're going to stand for anything and you're going to make a difference in this world and you're going to live in such a way that Satan will get some little bit of, you're going to get the devil's attention, you are going to get lied on, slandered on, all kinds of junk's going to pop up and you just won't get used to it. Amen. Who are you and I anyway? Am I better than Jesus? No. Am I better than Paul? No. Jesus, if they hated you, they're going to hate me, they're going to hate you. You know what the church needs to do tonight? Somebody says, well, it was right in the church. Get used to it. Get used to it. You say, well, I don't want to get used to it. Can I tell you something? We're still getting it better than we deserve. You know what? The reason Paul got used to it and didn't let it bug him is because he knew if it wasn't for the grace of God, he'd be in hell. And hell would be a lot worse than all the lying going on. It's better to get lied on for doing right than to go to hell. Amen. I'm telling you something. If we got what we deserve, Paul was a murderer. He was. If it had been murdered people, he got saved and God forgave him and gave him a reason for to live and gave him eternal life. And Paul said, listen, if I got what I deserved, I'd be in hell. Yeah. <clears throat> By the way, let's just get it down tonight. Does anybody besides me in this church have said things that we should not have said to people we should not have said it to? Yeah. If you say you haven't, I, I question that. I'd say we all we can all step in that boat. That we don't know the whole story, the whole facts of it, and we didn't even take time to check it out. But we told stuff that we were told, and we informed people, but we didn't really know the whole facts of it. We weren't there at that conversation. I've, been, I've had people tell me stuff that I said, I said, I, and I asked them, was you there? Well, no. I said, well, how do you know what I said? Well, I was told. I said, how do you know it's true? Because I'm going to tell you something, it's not true. Part of it is, part of it's not. But this is life. You live in a sin-cursed world. You're not going to go through life without people saying lies about you. You're not going, oh, hey, you know what? You don't, you don't do, anyway, get used to it. <clears throat> We're not any better than God. The Apostle Paul could have just... <laughs> <laughs> this is what I get from trying to serve God. <laughs> huh? <laughs> sucking my thumb? Not really biting it some, but not sucking. Hey, let's. <laughs> what was that done in the world? Paul said, I tell you, I've been slandered on, but falsely accused, and I was trying to serve God, giving the best I had. 
This is what I can get for serving God. I'll just tell you right now, I'm done. Oh, really? I'll tell you right now, somebody said that I wasn't singing quite right. I didn't have my part right. I'm done. I tried to be in that choir. I can tell by the way Brother Glenn was looking at me. He just didn't think I was singing right. Somebody else looked over at me like, you're off key. I'm done. Amen. <laughs> I'm the stupidest stuff. You know what y'all do? Get back up there and go to singing and let her rip. Amen. Amen. Let her rip. <laughs> Get used to it. And she got up and preached. I, I know he was preaching at me. Well, he never mentioned my name, but I can tell. <laughs> hey, let's tell you, life's real. We're not in. This ain't some Hollywood fake old show about life. This is real. <clears throat> Paul sucked his thumb and said, down. You would have never got the book of Romans. Amen? Right. Don't let it do it. You say, Reggie, what do I do? You get used to it. Just keep witnessing the people. Keep passing out tracts. Keep praying, keep singing, keep giving, keep saying amen. Just keep on smiling. Keep a rolling, amen. I'm telling you right now. You say, I, I, I'm going to give you a, a crash course in how to avoid criticism. Three points, you get it. Say nothing, do nothing, be nothing. You might avoid criticism. <laughs> <laughs> keep on forgiving, <laughs> keep on praying, keep on serving, keep on loving, just keep on keeping on. Yes. Don't kill them with kindness, just keep on keeping on, amen. <laughs> Best thing you do. I remember, I hadn't been preaching, but well, in fact, I, I'm not sure we were here yet, but I got invited to the Ministerial Alliance in Norwood. I was so excited. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'll go. You know, I don't want to be a stick in the mud. And I, you know, I didn't know much of anything. I said, they have a ministerial alliance. So I go to ministerial alliance. It's over here in the school. So I go over and they had a table back there and all the preachers were sitting around there. And how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? We just got to sit down real good. And they said, well, was, and, and just, I mean, no more got started. Then this preacher laid his hands on the table, looked straight at me and said, we need to get something dealt with here, first of all. Catholics are Christians, and Kelly's preaching against Catholicism, and they're just as much Christians as any of us sitting around this table. Hmm. And I said, well, let's just go. The Pope's not infallible. Mary's not a mediator. That, that bread is not the body of Christ, and that wine is not the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no purgatory. Amen. And there are no seven sacraments that you've got to try to do to go to heaven. Amen. So I said, what else are you going to talk about the Catholics? I said, if you loved them, you'd warn them. Amen. So you're, you know, and it got hot. <laughs> it, got, it got uncivil. Not, it, I wouldn't say it got uncivil. It just, he, he was waiting for me. Yeah. He was waiting for me in front of all those other preachers that we have. So you know what I did? <laughs> I was trying to be a brother of the Lord to the other preachers. <laughs> I said, guys, appreciate you inviting me, but I'm going to leave. And I got up, went out in the car, and Karen and I went knock, door knocking. I ain't going to stick thumb in my mouth and say, I'm done, Lord, and I've had it. You know what? I went and knocked on doors and passed out tracks. That's the honest Amen. truth. That's back when I was right. That was back when I was right with God. <laughs> I'm gonna let you know another thing. You can tell from the story that I've never forgiven him yet. Hmm. So this afternoon, getting this message ready, I said, "Lord, lay not that sin in His charge. I want to get this behind me. I hope I have. But it, but you're going to deal with that." You're going to deal with that. By the way, do you know what? That's why a lot of people aren't saved and don't want to serve God. Because they know the flax is going to fly. They don't want to take it. Second, what was, the first, what was the first response to it? We're talking about responding to being done evil. Get used to it. Get used to it. It's going to happen. 
You're not going to serve God without it. Number two, get some understanding about it. Get some understanding about it. Um, somebody talks bad about you. Here's what I want to tell you. You can read that chapter backward and forward all you want to, and you'll never find one time that anybody said, Hey, Paul, I've been told this about you. Is it the truth? Right. Not one single time in that whole chapter did anybody go to Paul and say, Paul, I've been told this. Is this the truth? Did you say that? Nobody better than nothing. I'm telling you, if it's that important to you and it's going to rip you up and ruin you and ruin your church life and ruin your spiritual life, why don't you just go to the person and say, listen, <clears throat> I was told this. And, they're probably, and they should say, first of all, who told you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But go to them and say, listen, somebody said you said this. Did I, how much, I mean, I want to hear your sign. I'm not here to have a fight. I'm not here to cause trouble. In fact, I'm here to get things taken care of. Yeah. I'll give us all some good advice tonight. That when somebody comes up to you and wants to inform you, to deform you, say, listen, let's just both go and see the guy. Yeah. If they hedge right then, you know you've got tr a problem not back there right here. Don't you ever inform somebody of somebody unless you're willing to go with that person to that person that you're informing them about. Get some understanding. It could be that we have offended somebody. It could be that we've done something wrong. Or there was a misunderstanding that needs to be cleared up. Get some understanding about it. The raw truth of it was... If I'm just going to set somebody comes and say, well, you know, I broke my own. You know. That's a possibility. And they inform me about you. I want to tell you something. If I don't, if it's, if, you know what, I want to give you this tonight. Let's be careful about this. What matters to me is your pattern, not one isolated incident. You may have said something. You may have done something wrong. I'm not really concerned about that. We can all mess up. We can all say things we shouldn't have said. Act ways we shouldn't act. What I am concerned about, if there becomes this pattern over and over again, then, I've, then I'm going to probably deal with it. But if it's not a pattern, why can't I just say, you know what? Could have been me. Give them some slack. Try to have some understanding about it. But if somebody comes to me and they're going to poison me about him, and it's going to bother me that bad, I need to go to him and say, listen, Brett. A guy told me that you killed an Iraqi, shot him in and drug him off like a dog. <laughs> you may have done that. I don't know. <laughs> the way he's looking at me like, who told you? <laughs> no. I'm just... But I ought to go to him and try to have an understanding of why he said those things. Now, he, he may say, well, Reggie, that's what I was told. And I might say, well, who told you? You know, and is there any, you know, do you think there's any validity to that? What's, you know, and if it's somebody that already knew hated me and hates the church and hates the work of God, I have to let it go. Amen. Yeah. Let it roll. All right. So get some understanding about it. Talk to the source instead of about the source. Get this. Talk to the source, not about the source. that would be important to you. Go to the source. If you're really bothered about it and it matters to you, do that. And you always ask the person who's trying to inform you to deform you, can we go together and talk to the person who, told, who informed you? Now, don't assume that it's true. They assume this junk had been, that they'd heard about Paul was true. Do not always assume. Give your, can I get something down tonight that we just need? Let's assume the best about each other, not the worst. Let's just, let's just give our brother the benefit of the doubt. You know something? I've been going to church with Don Zen for. <laughs> I've been going to church with Dean Martin till Methuselah landed on somewhere. I'm so tired of them guys. I know how. To... No, I know their pattern of life. You know what I know? They're liable to say something stupid. <laughs> They're liable to say. They're just like Red Shelley. I'm liable to say something pop out. That really shouldn't have been said that way or been said at all. Amen. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, hey, you know what? They're my brothers in the Lord. We all mess up. And I ain't going to say, bah, yeah. I'm just not letting nobody. By the way, I've had that too. And they probably had it on me. 
I've had people try to ruin me on Don, try to ruin me on Dean, try to ruin me on any. I'm some men that have been around for a long time. I ain't letting do it. I just ain't doing it. I ain't got no pattern of going around tearing everything up and causing all kinds of problems. I ain't got a pattern. So I'm just not, you know, just, you, you shouldn't do it. It's a single incident. And by the way, the Bible talks about busybody and other men's matter. Somebody tell you something, that don't mean you've got to repeat it. Give a, faith, give a faithful brother or sister the benefit of the doubt and just don't believe it because somebody said it. And I don't care if they come in with a, oh, you're that Egyptian. Man, I can't, I mean, that just knocked me out when I saw how they're lying on him. I mean, it's almost bad as calling me a Democrat. <laughs> Some of you get mad about that. Get right with God, you won't be mad at me no more. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff gets me in trouble. Did you know what he said to church the other night? I don't think preacher ought to be talking like that. I know. That's why, that's why I'm not big in some seminary and I'm not big in some deal because I'll never make it. I'm too crude. I'm not poised and smooth enough and careful enough about what I say. Some people are so stinking careful about what they say, they never say nothing. And they act like that spiritual superiority When all it is cowardice and want to have everybody like them. Amen. Now, finally and thirdly, what's number one? Get used to it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen over and over. I could really get into some. I could get, boom, give you some things. <clears throat> Second thing, you might got it. Get us get some understanding about it. Check it out. You know, make sure you understand things right. Number three, be unmovable because of it. You don't let people lying on you move you spiritually, mentally, or affectionately. What if somebody tonight <clears throat> came up to me and said, Reggie, I, I love you, you're my friend, the Lord, you're our pastor, and, and there's something I really, you need to know. You, I mean, I'm just telling Reggie, I really need to talk to you. So, okay, we go out, we way out here somewhere. <clears throat> Reggie, um, your wife's looking at another man there in church in a way she should not be looking at him. <laughs> Thanks for telling me. <laughs> I believe every word. I know you would never have nothing wrong. Wait till we get home. You know how something, I kind of know my wife. Yeah. Now, <laughs> she may have prayed for the Lord to take me on home. I don't know. <laughs> she, she may think inwardly I'm the biggest mistake that ever happened to her. I don't know. But I'm going to be honest with you. Danny, if I was in Moscow, Russia, I wouldn't worry about her the slightest. You know why? She has a pattern. Amen. Amen. And I am not letting anybody Amen. destroy Amen. my heart toward her Amen. over a stinking lie. Amen. In fact, guys, don't ever tell me that. You're liable to lose me. Yeah, I'm just being honest with you. I'll still shake your hand. And I'll still smile at you. I'll be civil to you, but I'll probably you're probably going to lose me. Because you talk about my wife that way, I, I, you know, when I know better, it ain't going to fly very good. <clears throat> the same thing goes with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. If they've not really given you a patterned reason to believe stuff on them, why would we want to believe stuff on them? You know what? And if, if some of it's true, why not just pray for them, love them, and try to help them through and get on down the road and encourage them in the Lord? We need to be a move, but Paul didn't quit just because he was maligned and lied on. Lied on like a dog. You know what Paul did? He kept a right testimony and the right spirit through it. Now, this is where it's tough. Because we may not suck our thumb, but we may get mad inside. But Paul kept a good spirit and a good testimony in the middle of it. And I'll show you, prove it to you in the Bible right here, what a, a good response to the evil done to him did for him <clears throat> in his life. What's the devil after? By slandering you. Lying to you and doing all kinds of stuff. What's he after? 
He wants you to quit. He wants you to quit. He wants you to get frustrated, aggravated, disgusted, sick of it, tired of it, and say, I'm done. I'm out. And that goes for preachers, people in the church. It don't matter. I've had all I can handle. I'm not taking any more of it. That's the goal. Let me just tell you. That's what it's all about, is to get you to quit. That's what it's all about. To blow you out. So what do you do? You just say, I'm not moving. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to wear it out. Let time bear witness. I'm going to keep serving. I'm going to keep singing. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep coming. I'm not going to bow up. And I ain't going to blow out. I want to show you something really sweet. That this, this thing ends up good. Amen. Look in chapter uh, 20, 21, verse 37. Verse 37. Paul was being led in the castle. He's in the chief captain. So now he's under, watch this everybody, he's under the jurisdiction and authority of the chief captain. So now go to chapter 23. Go to chapter 23, and we're going to look at verse number 17. Now here's what had happened. There were more than 40 men that had made a vow to each other to kill Paul. Am I right or wrong? That's exactly right. And they was going to get the chief captain to bring Paul through, see, to hear him basically, and they're going to kill him on the journey through. And the story is that Paul had, a, was it his sister's son, his nephew, heard about this. And the nephew boy comes and tells the chief captain, or tells Paul. And in verse 17, then Paul called one of the centurions and him and said, bring this young man unto who? To everybody tell me. Yeah. The chief captain. Now I want you to think about something. I don't know exactly how many days transpired, time transpired, but Paul's... Not moving, not getting shook up, not sucking his thumb, not quitting, not getting all puffed up and bowed up and blowed out, had an effect on this man. Yeah. Are you listening to me? This We're talking about how to respond to evil. Paul had been treated very, very evilly by these people. And they and he says, bring the, he said to captain, for he has a certain thing to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the chief captain and said... Paul the prisoner called me unto him and prayed me to bring this young man unto thee who has something to say unto thee. Then the chief captain took him by the hand and went with, the, with him aside privately and asked him, What is this that thou hast to tell me? And he said, The Jews have agreed to desire thee that thou wouldst bring Paul down tomorrow into the council as though they would inquire somewhat of him more perfectly. They're lying. But do not thou yield unto them, for their, for their lying wait for him, of them more than forty men, which have bound themselves with an oath that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now they are ready looking for a promise from thee. Now watch, watch this. So the chief captain then let the young man, man depart and charged him, See thou tell no man that thou hast showed these things to me. <clears throat> now I'm going to tell you something. If that chief captain who had had custody of Paul for all that time believed if Paul had not conducted himself in a godly spiritual manner things would have turned out entirely different. Watch this. Verse 23 And he, the chief captain, called in him two centurions. Two centurions or what? They got a hundred men each underneath it. Okay. Make ready two hundred soldiers to go to Caesarea. And horsemen, three score and ten. How many we got so far? Two centurions, two hundred horsemen, and seventy uh what are they? Spearmen. Uh, ho uh horsemen ten. And then look at the next thing. Spearmen two hundred. Add up how many people he is putting down to protect Paul at this point. Over four hundred and seventy men. To protect one man. Yeah. Watch what he says. And provide them beasts that they may set Paul on. And bring him safe unto Felix the governor. And watch verse 25. And he, that chief captain, wrote a letter after this manner. It's going to tell you what he wrote about Paul. Claudius, Lysias, unto the most excellent governor Felix, sendeth greeting. This man, 
talking about Paul, was taken of the Jews and should have been killed of them. Then I came in, then, then came I with an army and rescued him, having understood that he was a Roman. And when I there, when I, when I would have known the cause wherefore they accused him, I brought him forth into their council. Now watch this. Whom I perceived to be accused of questions of their law, but to have nothing laid to his charge worthy of death or bonds. You know what he's telling? Paul is in false, been falsely imprisoned. He's guilty of nothing they've accused him of. And when it was told me how that the Jews laid wait for the man, I sent straightway to thee and gave commandment to his accusers also to say before thee what they had against him. Farewell. You don't get letters of recommendation like that acting like an idiot. You don't get letters of recommendation of that being bitter and hateful and mad at the world and everybody else and sucking your thumb. Paul did not move. He just kept being Paul. Just kept being Paul. He just kept being Paul. Lied on, slandered, made out to be everything in the world but what he was. He just kept being Paul. Had a good spirit. Good attitude. Got, he just used to it. This is life. This is part of the ministry. This is part of Christian living. This is not an isolated event in Paul's life. Turn your Bibles over to Acts 28. You folks, get your song picked out. <laughs> Paul, of course, that ship broke in pieces and everything. Chapter 7, storm broke in pieces. They, verse number 1, chapter 28. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, everyone, because of the present cold and because rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came something out of the fire. What was it? A viper. <clears throat> Jesus called those. Remember this morning he called the Pharisees, is it vipers and serpents? There's a reason that the Bible's got this in there. Watch this. I preached a message on this a long time ago, but I'm just going to review on this a little bit tonight about it, what, what to do in this situation. Uh, fastened a viper out of his heat and fastened on his hands. And when the barbarians, these unsaved people, saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt, <laughs> this man is a murderer. No doubt. Whom though he has escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffered not him to live. They've got it all figured out. This guy's got to be a murderer. He thought he'd escaped the, the judgment of God, but God's got him. And they just... Can I say something to you? I, I'm going to say something tonight. Brother Lane and Sister Sonia, Amen. I hope you know I love you. But there's things that's happened in my life since the loss of your son has made me do some hard thinking. What if somebody would have come to you and said, your son passed away? What secret sin did you have? Yeah, right. yeah. God must be judging you guys. Yeah. Be really, really careful what you think might be going on in somebody else's life. Because I can tell you right now, I, I, I don't believe one word of what I just said. It is not true. The raw, raw truth of it is, I'm not saying he was sinless, but I'm saying he's one of the most godly young men I ever knew. Yeah. Yeah. You, you teenage boys and you teenage girls who knew him better than any of us other adults knew him, tell me, Brett, what kind of man was he? Godly man. You want to know what a boy really is? Talk to his buddies if they'll tell you the truth. You'll really know what he is. But what if somebody pops around and starts talking about, well, you know, Brother Phil, I just wonder what was going on in his life, that God took his life. I mean, everybody, I'll tell you that, but no doubt. Everything they were saying about Paul, that was another lie about Paul right there. You know what did Paul do? Watch this. This is, this, this is going to show you about not moving. The point I'm making is don't move, don't get shook. 
Don't don't let the devil run you off. Don't let you don't let him buzz you out. Look what he does. <clears throat> no, in verse number five, he Paul shook off the beast into the fire. Now this is this is gold, pure gold right here, and felt no harm. Amen. You know what Paul did? He's there by the fire. Snake bit him. They're accusing him, but you did something wrong, and God's caught up with you. <laughs> Everywhere I go, people's against me. Everywhere I go, people lie on me. I didn't do anything to get this. Paul just shook it off. <laughs> and watch this. And felt no harm. They hurt my feelings. They harmed me. I feel it. Felt no harm. You don't read there where Paul said, Aha! Sorry, low down bunch. Said I was a murderer. God caught you in a stinking lie, didn't he? Paul didn't say that. Just shook it off. Felt no harm. Now look what they do. Now this is where I'm talking. Don't move. Just be steady. Just be steady. Look what look what happens. Now they just got through saying he's a murderer. And now they're still looking at the outward circumstances. How be it when they looked when he should have swollen? <laughs> Does anybody know what spiritual swelling is? It's when you've been infected with poison. And you ain't healthy spiritually because you've been lied on. You've been talked about. You've been, you've been infected. He should have swollen or fallen down. That's what Satan's after. He wants you to swell up. He wants you to fall over. Quit. Dead suddenly. But after they saw, after they had looked, how long? A great while. A great while. And, and saw no harm. They did what? They changed their minds. Well, I'll be. And said what? He went from being a murderer to a god. In their eyes. You know why? Because he didn't swell up. He didn't move and quit and say, well, that's the way you're going to talk about me. I'm out of here. I'm done. Yeah. That's a good stuff. Amen. Amen. I think old Cody preached a good message, don't you? He helped me. He hope he helped you. What is he saying here? Paul didn't move just because he got snake bit. <laughs> you're going to get snake bit. Just don't swell up. Don't fall out, fall over. Just stay in there. Pretty soon, after a great while, let me tell you something. <clears throat> you you just keep driving by that neighbor's house every Sunday morning, even when it's been hard for you to do it. After a while, they say, "Well, you know what? That may not be true about him. What I heard, he's still going to church, still faithful. They don't seem like nothing's changed." That's why 1 Corinthians 15, 58 is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Therefore, my beloved brethren, what? Be a steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Just don't let them blow you out. Just don't do it. They're going to, you're going to be lied on. You're going to be slandered. And it's probably going to come from the most unexpected places you ever thought in your life. Just don't let it move you. Get used to it. Understand it's part of it. Don't let it move you. Amen. Amen. Lord, boy. Has my attitude been bad tonight? Has anybody tell me my attitude been bad? Has it been a little bit snarky? Has that mean streak been coming out too much? <clears throat> Can I tell you something? I ain't no Apostle Paul. Can I tell you something? I can preach a message, but I don't live one very good. And you know what I'm afraid of, Brother Kine? That this week, I will hear that somebody said something. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to blow out. Get that thumb ready. Yeah, get that thumb ready. <laughs> Can I tell you tonight, don't be shocked this week if somebody lies about you this week and you hear about it. Remember the message. Pray for me that I remember it. You all come and sing for us tonight, would you? Yeah. <clears throat>
the Bible so perfect. He got bit by a viper. They're all poison. Yeah, yeah they're all poison. It was poison. It yeah. wasn't no snake. It could have been a black snake. Yeah, that's right. I heard him only. He got bit by a poison viper. Poison viper. Viper, they'll kill you, Hex. It also wasn't It's a lot in that. I, I hope that helped you tonight. Hope it helped <clears throat> Y'all get behind the pulpit, huh? Yes, we don't let anybody touch that grand. No, I'm just lying to you. Use that grand. I'm so mean, it's pitiful, ain't it? Sister, don't pay no attention to me, okay? Hey, come up closer to the pulpit. We won't. There you go. Yeah, there you go. leaving you. Is that the little sister? Yes, sir. Y'all brothers? Yes, sir. And you're the mama? And you're the daddy? Boy, I tell you what, isn't that a blessing? Amen. Boy, I tell you, that little girl, I mean, she said, I am out of here. I am out of here. Now, are you some of you girls' sisters? You're not sisters. What are you doing? Married some of you guys? Oh, cousins. There's a separate children. Oh, there. She's talking about Kayla and Michaela. My daughter-in-law on the end. Daughter-in-law? Oh, ma'am, I ought to warn you. you may... <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, that's a blessing. I want to say to you, listen to you guys, if I could tell you anything, treat each other right. Yes, sir. Love one another. When you're 50, still be able to get up and sing together like this. Yes, sir. And uh, you all doing something right. Either that or you got me fooled bad. <laughs> Oh, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, boy, I tell you, that's good, brother. That's yeah. a blessing. Amen. That's worth coming to church. Amen. <clears throat> well, let's stand together. I've aggravated you to death. I want to say to the church tonight, I'm, I'm not totally ignorant. I know that my attitude and my personality comes across bad sometimes. But I still love you. 
And I thank you for putting up with me, okay? I, I understand that. I still appreciate it, and I mean, I, I mean that with all my heart. Boy, I'm glad you're long-suffering with me. And so, here we go. Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear. Joyously singing with heart no joy. 